QA Ninja. Hey guys, your boy the QA Ninja here, back with another episode. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the RG351P. Now, if you see my previous video about the RG350, I felt like that was the best handheld of 2020. Now this one, I'm going to go over why in detail and review as to why I think this is going to be the best handheld of 2021. The features, the details, the specs, this bad boy is all that and then some. So let's go dive in to this one for you. Stick around, we got a good one for you. Alright, so here it is, the RG351P. We're going to go ahead and unbox this bad boy. Special shout out and special thanks to Tom Top for sending me this for the purpose of review here. So I'm going to go over the box. It's a pretty generic box. Nothing too crazy. It's kind of a similar style from Amber Nick that was sent for the RG350 from last year. So the RG351P, I want to say it came out early fall. Um, so we're just going to lift this up. Similar layout to the RG350M. But this is the plastic model here. Okay. So as you see, yeah, it's pretty lightweight. I definitely like this a lot better than the previous models. Very lightweight, you see that's the card slot underneath there with the reset button now positioned there. They made a lot of different improvements. The volume switch on the side, which is a great improvement. The L1, L2, and the R1, R2 buttons could be improved. I always thought the placement of them was a little wonky, but that's okay, I guess. What are you gonna do? The joysticks are great. A lot lower, no need for modding. I like that they put the D-pad above here. Same spot as the buttons. And then the start and select. So the overall button layout is great. So here's a, a direct comparison to my RG350 from my other video. So yeah, similar in size. The screen is about the same. Um, but I noticed the improvements are definitely in the joy pad. The, the D-pad is there. Swapped out. Speakers are still there. So the placement of everything just so much better. And they did get rid of the HDMI port. But you can plug it in with the Type-C above to an HDMI out also still. So lots of improvements just on the overall aesthetics alone. Very nice. So I say let's go ahead and boot it up, give it a shot, take a look at what we got here. From what I understand, there are games that are preloaded on this SD card. So I will leave a link below for this bad boy. So let's take a look at it. I do believe it is running Amulek. Emulation Station. So yep, Emulek, Emulation Station. Okay, so we got Nintendo DS loaded on here. Very nice. Some Final Burn Alpha. Some MAME. Oh, look at that, some Wonder Swan Color. Hmm. And then of course you've got, looks like some Capcom loaded up on here, very nice. Neo Geo, PC Engine. And of course, your regular consoles. I'm very interested in Nintendo 64. I heard it plays Nintendo 64 really well. Ah yes, and Dreamcast is probably the one I'm most excited about. I heard it can handle Dreamcast very well. Neo Geo Pocket, PlayStation, PSP. Okay, very nice. So let's just check out some of the games. I'm gonna test out the ones that are more difficult to emulate. So we'll go with N64 and Mario Kart 64. All right, we'll take a look at this. Um, again, I really love the placement of the buttons on this. It's pretty awesome, actually. Okay. So far, not too bad. I'll try to bring it up into focus so you guys can see the, the gameplay and hear a little bit of it. Okay. Mario Kart 64 is definitely one of my all-time favorite Nintendo games for any system I mean it's a given all right and for this my go-to always Luigi
Okay, so far so good. Try to bring this into focus. I haven't noticed any too much skipping in terms of music, anything just yet. So let's check out the gameplay. Okay, not too bad actually. I'm actually impressed by this. I know the original RG350 was originally wasn't even able to handle N64 initially. So this is actually a big improvement over the previous models. Okay. So off the bat, I can tell this is good. This is right on par with, I would say, the Odroid Go handheld or the RK2020. Maybe even better, I would say, in terms of emulation for the N64. Very nice. Alright, so next I'm going to check out Dreamcast. Arguably one of my top 10 favorite games of all time. So caliber for the Dreamcast. This game is, is so dope on the Dreamcast. The graphics and everything. Okay. So even if it can handle this somewhat, I'll be very, very impressed for a handheld. To handle this bad boy. Taki is always my go-to for this one. I'm going to be looking for um, screen tear or any type of lag. So far, not too bad. Just kind of skip on some of the soundtrack, but overall, not too crazy. And I uh, hard to see in the camera here, but I'm not really seeing any screen tear. The animations seem pretty smooth, pretty fluid. It looks so much better in person. Wow, this is actually impressive. Just the fact that it can run it at this many frames per second. This has to be at least almost almost 60 frames per second for Dreamcast. Yeah, that's pretty dope, actually. That's pretty good. Wow. Okay, just, just the fact that it can handle Dreamcast like this alone is a seller for me. And then PlayStation Portable. There's a lot of games that I, I would imagine could give this handheld a challenge. So I'm going to try Mega Man for the PSP. Um... I would love to try other games on here though too, including where you see the FPS on the top screen. So with the gameplay, I'm hoping it can get to at least almost 60. We'll see what happens with the actual gameplay. So far, I'm definitely digging this though. Wow, this is this is a pretty big deal for a handheld. All right, let's give a look here. No real screen tearing or anything like that. The music in the background looks pretty good. This is this is impressive. I have to say this is this is really impressive for handheld. Guys, I hope this was helpful. If it was, karate chop that like button and subscribe. Check out all my other videos, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.